In choosing God over everything, there is much good in our life. Yet at the very same time, we find that all of us who have chosen God over everything, there are still hardships that we face and that we go through. Through Jeremiah, we will see one of those hardships to which I believe is a great hardship Mm -hmm. that many of us as believers, we face in the world and on our journey that we are all going down. Though we still have these hardships on our journey, we will see today that God fortifies us. Mm -hmm. We'll see that God, he blesses us to be able to endure to be able to persevere, to be able to overcome in all that we go through, in all of our hardships. Again, the Lord, he fortifies us. Keep that in mind today. God, he blesses us. Again, there is a decision that we all have to make in our life. There is a decision that all of us have to make in this life that we live. And Jeremiah, he would tell all of us that he chose joy when he chose God over everything. In the first of my key verses for today, we see there that Jeremiah, he spoke of that joy. And he said that the joy that he had obtained in his heart He said he obtained it by eating the word of God. He said he obtained it there when he chose to, in other words, consume the word of God. At the start of this new year, I began to wonder again about those new year's resolutions that so many people love to make. And I began to wonder how many folks made the resolution of getting into the word of God. David, he encouraged that one should taste and see that the Lord is good. Have you gave God a taste today? We're in the 15th chapter of Jeremiah. We read from the 10th through the 21st verse responsively. And our key verses for today is the 16th and the 17th verse. Jesus, he proclaimed that he is the bread of life. Jesus, he then encouraged all of those that hungered and all of those that thirst for life He encouraged us to come unto him and to eat and to drink Mm -hmm. so that we may be blessed Mm -hmm. so that our joy may be filled Mm -hmm. so that we can, Jesus said, obtain life. Again, how many of us have chosen Jesus today? How many of us have chosen Yeshua or or the Messiah or Christ today over everything? I would tell you today that we all truly need to get into the word of God. When I say that we need to get into the word of God today, I want to make it very clear that I'm not talking about just nibbling off of the word I'm not talking about just sampling the word of God. I'm talking about eating the whole plate. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about eating it completely. And then I am talking about digesting the word of God. You see, the word of God, when we truly eat it, when we truly digest it, It will become a part of our being. It will become a part of our soul. And so, again, with it being a part of our being, with it being a part of our soul, our walk is brand new. Our talk is brand new. 
the every action that we take. It is brand new. It is all of God. Yeah, yeah. On this note, I, I began to think back to when I truly began to believe mm-hmm. in my life. And I tell you today that it was not when I was baptized at eight years old. It came much later in my life. You see, when I was eight years old, I didn't know anything. I just wanted to eat the communion bread and and drink the juice. As y'all have heard me say before. You see, up until I had started to truly believe In the Lord, all I was doing was nibbling off the word of God. I was just sampling it. I had to to do more. I had to do more than just nibble and just sample. And so I I began to believe when I prayed for the very first time in my life, when I truly prayed for the very first time in my life. And when I truly prayed for the very first time in my life, the kid that had so many questions about the Lord had all those questions answered by God. And God, I tell you, he put his word in not only my mouth, he put it in my heart. Again, I encourage all of you today that we need to eat that we need to consume, that we need to digest the word of God so that God's word becomes a part of our being. You see, when God is a part of your being, you begin to live in sync with him. In other words, you begin to be in fellowship with him. And again, our walk changes when we are in fellowship with the Lord. Our talk changes when we are in fellowship with the Lord. Our actions, they change when we are in sync, when we are in harmony, when we are in fellowship with the Lord, our God. And like Jeremiah, Mm -hmm. we will be filled with a great joy we'll be filled with great joy in our hearts and our hearts. I tell you that they will rejoice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when we go about choosing God over everything, I want you to understand. And I want you to know today that the everything it tends to fight back against us. It tends to not be happy with the choice that we have made by choosing God over everything. You see, some believe that life will magically get easier when we choose God over everything. But life says, no, 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 not so fast. You who think you are a believer, you see life, it does not magically get any easier as our eyes. They, they begin to open to the reality in which we are a part of the reality in which we live. You see, we may find ourselves having the same kind of struggle, the same kind of hardship that Jeremiah dealt with in his fellowship and in his calling that he had been commissioned, that he had been tasked with by the Lord. Here in the 15th chapter of Jeremiah, we will see that the Lord had a task for Jeremiah to carry out. And in this task, we will see that God, he was not done moving against the wickedness of Judah. That is the Southern kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now, prior to this 15th chapter, we can see where Jeremiah had been working and speaking on God's behalf as a prophet. On one occasion, Jeremiah, he delivered God's message about the wickedness of Judah to the people. And Jeremiah, he called for the people to repent from their wickedness. That sounds much like what the believer ought to be doing today when it comes to the wicked ones in our world. We just went over that in our Sunday school lesson today. On another occasion, Jeremiah, he had another message to deliver to those of Judah. And that message spoke of Judah's future destruction because of their wickedness. 
It spoke of their destruction. It spoke of their captivity because again, they would not repent. They would not turn away from their wicked ways as God had been calling on them to do. Again, this sounds like a message that the believer has for those who are of wickedness today, because again, there is a destruction that awaits them. There is a captivity and eternal captivity that awaits them as well. And again, we have seen that in our Sunday school lesson for this week. So Jeremiah, I want you to understand he was doing exactly what God had commissioned. He was doing exactly what God had called him to do. Jeremiah, he was called and he was sanctified by the Lord. He was sanctified by the Lord before he was even born in this world. Before he was even born in this world, God had put his words into Jeremiah's mouth to deliver to the people. The Lord said to Jeremiah that the words that were put in his mouth, listen to this, they were words to root out and to pull down. They were words to destroy and to throw down. At the same time, the Lord said to Jeremiah that the words that he put in his mouth, they were words to build. They were words to plant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah had a word for the people. Mm -hmm. And it was up to the people to either accept those words and live by those words or not. They chose the not. A word has been put in your mouth today, a word that will tear down, that will bring down wickedness, but a word that will build up, a word that will uplift all those who are of wickedness, should they choose to listen, should they choose to heed those words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those words have been put in our mouth because we have chosen God over everything mm -hmm. and we have received the truth. No. Jeremiah, he wasn't a popular man. Right. He wasn't a popular person in that land. Mm -hmm. The reason why Jeremiah wasn't a popular person in that land was because of the word that he chose to live by. Mm -hmm. The reason why Jeremiah wasn't a popular person in that land was because he chose God over everything. Jeremiah, I want you to understand, he was not loved in that land. He wasn't loved by the people because he spoke against the people in their wickedness. In fact, just like Elijah and other prophets of that era, Jeremiah, he lived under the threat of his life, always in danger. Because the people wanted to remove him. They wanted to remove his name from memory. They desired to kill him, we find in scripture. Listen to that. Listen to what Jeremiah went through because he chose God over everything. I think about all of us today. Think about all of us and that calling which we who are of genuine faith, we have chosen to take up in the word by which we have chosen to live by because we, because of our faith, we have chosen God over everything. For Jeremiah choosing God over everything, it came with a certain hardship that again, I tell you today, it can be rather difficult for many believers. Many believers deal with this hardship today because he chose God over everything and yeah. because he accepted his holy calling. Jeremiah found that he did not fit in with the crowd. All right. All right. How many of you today, because you have chosen God over everything, 
How many of you, y'all are chuckling, so I guess you all know where this question is going. How many of you find that you don't fit in with the crowd? I, I see a hand raised over here today. And then I, I began to wonder how many of us are ready to not fit in with the crowd today. How many of us have truly chosen God over everything and accepted our holy calling? See, there's a reason why I asked that question today. We'll see it here in a little bit. I think we already see it. You see, we today, we have a holy calling. As Paul said to Timothy in his second letter to him, our calling is a holy calling according to God's own purpose and according to God's grace. When you and I, when we choose God over everything, I want you to know, I want you to understand today that we must be prepared for all that is to come. All right. All right. So again, I feel I must ask you today, are you prepared? Are you ready to not fit in with the crowd? Are you ready not to fit in with the crowd because you have chosen God over everything? We'll see here in the second of my key verses for today that Jeremiah, he said here, he said, I did not sit in the assembly of mockers. All of those who were mocking God, Jeremiah said he had no part with them. All right. All right. Jeremiah, we see him say there in that verse, it says, nor did I rejoice. He didn't rejoice with them. Mm -hmm. He didn't laugh with them in their wickedness. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah, he said there, he said, I sat alone because of your hand, because of God's hand. Jeremiah said that he was ready to sit alone. Mm -hmm. And Jeremiah said that I sat alone because of your hand, for you have filled me with indignation. Jeremiah said that he was filled with anger towards all of those that were mocking the Lord. Now, now, I want to make this very clear because I don't want this hardship that I'm speaking of today to be misunderstood. Jeremiah was not saying that he sat alone because the people didn't like him. Jeremiah, we'll see that in that verse, is saying that he sat alone because he chose to sit away from the wicked ones. And Jeremiah chose to separate himself from the crowd of wickedness. How many of us are willing to do that today? How many of us are ready to do that today as believers when we choose God over everything? Are you ready to sit away from the crowd? You see, Jeremiah, he understood his holy calling. And in understanding his holy calling, he didn't want to be entangled with that crowd of wickedness. So he did what believers are supposed to do. He removed himself from the wicked ones. You see, a blessing from consuming the word of God is spiritual discernment. You see, with spiritual discernment, we, the ones who are of genuine faith, we know right from wrong, according not to man, but according to God. So I would ask today, should not the child of God separate him or herself from all that is wicked? Should we not separate ourselves from all that is not right? For our soul, should we not separate ourselves from that crowd of wickedness that lives all around us today? 
should we not have any part in sin? You see, haven't we been sanctified by the Lord? We've been sanctified, we've been sanctified by the Lord through the shed blood of Jesus so that we may be a vessel of use by God. What would God have use for with a, a sinful vessel? You see, we, we, we have been made holy. We have been made righteous through the blood of Jesus. And because we have been made holy and because we have been made righteous, why should we ever desire to go back? Why should we ever desire to go back and be entangled? Why should we ever desire to go back and be in the snare, in the bondage, in the captivity of sin? You see, Scripture repeatedly tells us to flee from sin. Scripture repeatedly tells us to have no part with those who are of wickedness. So if you truly are going to choose God over everything, then you, again, better be ready to not fit in the crowd. You see, I want you to hear and I want you to know and I want you to understand today that when you choose God over everything, God has set you apart from the crowd. Sadly, there are many who have claimed to be of faith that struggle or simply cannot deal with the hardship of not fitting in the crowd. There are many who struggle with being different in this world that we live in today. Rather than being set apart to be a special treasure in God's eyes, some rather cave in and strive to be in the crowd. This is to say that they rather be loved by man than be loved by God. Listen to that for a moment. There are some who live among us who would say that they are a child of God, but instead of being set apart from the crowd, they do everything that they possibly can to fit in with the crowd so that they can be loved by the crowd instead of hated by the crowd so that they could be popular, so that they could be one of the cool kids. I much rather be different. I much rather be sanctified. I much rather be set apart. Stand out as that, that special treasure in God's eyes rather than be caught up in sin with all of those who are of wickedness. I, I don't want that tell the Lord that we discussed in the Sunday school lesson today. I don't want to be a part of that suffering. I want to have a home in God's heavenly kingdom. That is why I've chosen God over everything. That is why I've chosen God over sin. That is why I've chosen God over the crowd. That is why I've chosen God over wickedness. I don't know if you're walking with me here today. You see, the desire to fit in and be a part of the crowd, it, it kind of takes me back. I don't know if it takes you back, but I kind of just mentioned it here. But it takes me back to my childhood years when, when I was in school. And it was everything to, to, to be in the crowd. It was everything to be popular. Everything seemed like a, a popularity contest in those days. I don't know if y'all went through it. I don't know if it was True for all of you, but I know it was like that for me. You see, whatever the trend or whatever the fad of the day was, you know, everybody would do their very best to, to, to be in that fad or to be in that trend so that they could, again, fit in and, and be part of the cool crowd, if you will. For example, you, when I was growing up, you had to have a pair of Jordans. 
If you didn't have a pair of Jordans, you just didn't fit in. You, you, you weren't one of the cool kids if you didn't have a pair of Jordans. I remember in the early 90s, everybody had to have a starter jacket, a starter coat, one of those puff coats. If you didn't have one of those, you didn't fit in, you weren't cool. By the time I got to middle school, you know, you had to, to wear some of the, the popular apparel. You had to have Tommy Hill figure. If you wasn't wearing Tommy Hill figure, you was nothing. You wasn't a part of the crowd, you, you wasn't cool. I tell you what, you know, when back in, in those days, you know, if if you didn't fit in, they called you a lame. And you know, nobody wanted to be that when I was growing up. Nobody wanted to be a lame. Being lame was something that as a kid you just never wanted to be called or known as. Nobody wanted to, to, to be known as someone who was broke because they didn't have a pair of Jordans or because they wasn't wearing tummy heel figures. What a messed up world we live in. <laughs> what a messed up world we live in when it is seemingly of the utmost importance to some that they fit in with such a crowd that would judge like that. It was one thing to do it as kids. It's another thing to still be doing it as adults. <laughs> Even though we say that we have matured, everything still seems to boil down to what you're wearing, who you are. Everything still seems to boil down to fitting in. Everything still seems to boil down to a popularity contest. The truth of the matter is that we all have a nature in us. A nature to where we want to be accepted. A nature to where we want to be loved, especially by our peers, by, by all of those that are around us. Though I would suggest to you today that you again have to be very careful about the crowd that you desire to fit in. You have to be very careful about who it is that you want loving you. What good ever came from fitting in the cool crowd? And I, I look back on it today, and I wanted it very badly to fit in when I was younger and I was in school, but I look back on it now and I just see nothing but a bunch of silliness. It was silly. And, and again, I tell you today that I'm so thankful for my parents and, and for my uncles and for my aunts and my grandparents and and the other adults that, that were all around back then that were saying, you don't have to worry about fitting in with that crowd. Mm -hmm. That would say to me, there is nothing wrong with being different. I am so grateful and I'm so thankful mm -hmm. that I had that in my life. That I had people in my life saying it's okay to be weird. Mm -hmm. Saying it is okay to be different. See, something my parents always taught me was to be my own person. Mm -hmm. Make decisions for myself. Mm -hmm. I was taught to be sure that the crowd around me was one that could help me to grow. Mm -hmm. One that could help me become and to be a better person. All right. All right. Again, I wonder what good comes from today in trying to fit in with the cool crowd. A crowd today, when you look around, is nothing but a crowd of wickedness. Now, some will say that there is no fun in being a child of God. So I suppose it is fun and camaraderie to be in the crowd, in the crowd of wickedness. And I suppose the suggestion is that there is no fun when you are in fellowship with the Lord. Now, to me, one who is in fellowship with the Lord, I would say that that is a very foolish thought to have. And again, I will ask all of you today, all of those listening, all of those watching today, are you still trying to fit in with that crowd? Are you still trying to fit in today? 
This again reminds me of school where the suggestion was that the cool kids had lots of fun and the lame kids didn't have any fun at all. They just sat at home on the weekends and all they did was just get their schoolwork. They had no fun at all. Are we still that immature today as adults? Honestly, it is quite a shame that so many folks have not matured, that so many of us have not grew up from a high school mindset. And I tell you today that we cannot let a high school mindset separate us from the greater joy of, of being in fellowship with the Lord. Don't you worry about whether or not you are going to be popular. Don't you worry about whether or not you are going to be loved by the crowd. Because God's love, it far exceeds the love of the world. God's love, it far exceeds the love of the crowd. My encouragement for you this year is for you to choose God over everything and don't worry about what somebody else is going to say, think, or judge of you. I don't know if you hear me here today. Though it is a great hardship to not fit in, I tell you that there comes an even greater hardship. That again, I believe many of us as believers that we face today. And we'll see this hardship there again in my key verse while Jeremiah was sitting alone from those that, that live mocking the Lord and laughing at the way of God. He sat there and he watched them do this and they were doing it with exuberant joy. And we'll see there in the third and in the fourth verse here in the 15th chapter that a word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. And the Lord, he spoke to Jeremiah about the four forms of destruction that was to come the way of the wicked ones. And after hearing this word, I imagine that Jeremiah, he, he chuckled for a moment and then he, he began, he began to pray. We'll see there in the 15th chapter. And, and in this prayer, we will see that Jeremiah there in the 15th verse, he asked the Lord to remember him. He asked the Lord there in the 15th verse to, to visit him. He, he wanted God to know that he had already suffered rebuke for his sake. When we look at this prayer, when we look at Jeremiah's supplication here, we see that the prophet, he, he clearly felt aggrieved. He felt that he was being treated unfairly. And I want y'all to know that he didn't feel like he was being treated unfairly by the people. Jeremiah felt like the Lord had abandoned him while he was there living by faith and working on God's behalf, giving the message to the people. Again, he felt abandoned by God. How many of us have ever felt like God has abandoned us? Even though we have given the Lord all of our faith, how many of us have ever felt like we have given God all of our faith yet he in return, he seems to be too busy tending to the needs of those elsewhere and not tending to our needs. You see, some of us, we began to feel that when God is doing this, we began to feel miserable. We began to feel like we are all alone in this world we begin to feel like we are alone in the crowd of this world. And I tell you that we have a nature to where we want to be loved. And as soon as we feel like we aren't being loved for one second, we are disturbed. We are troubled. We are annoyed. It doesn't sit well with us. Have you again ever felt that God has abandoned you on your journey? I want to make something very clear to you today about that hardship, because this is a major hardship 
feeling like God has abandoned you. I want to make it clear to you today. All of you who are like me, all of us who have gone about choosing God over everything. I want you to know that God has never left you. I want you to know today that we are never alone in that hardship. You are never alone. Mm -hmm. You see, God is always with you. The Lord will never leave you. God will never forsake you as well. All right. All right. By consuming his God word, the word I want you to understand today, it has been put in your soul. Mm -hmm. It is buried there and it is living there in your heart today. Therefore, we should understand that the word of God, it is always with us. Wherever it is that we go, the word is with you. Whatever it is that you may be going through, the word of God is with you. When you feel like you are all alone, the word of God, it is with you. I don't know if you hear me here today. You see, the word of God, it does not leave us unless we choose to abandon it. Unless we choose to throw it away. The word of God, it does not leave you today. You see, God is faithful. And because God is faithful, he is always right there with you. He's always by your side. You see, he never leaves us. If God never leaves us, then why should we ever think for a second to leave him? Would we leave God the joy that he brings, the peace, the peace that he gives us? Would we dare abandon it for the love of man, the love of the world? My answer to that question is, I hope not. I, I, I honestly hope not. I hope that no one who has received the word of God ever chooses to abandon it. Therefore, abandoning him. You see, there is far greater joy in the crowd of God than fun that can be found in the crowd of wickedness. I much rather be apart from the world and be different. I much rather be sanctified than be a part of the crowd, that crowd of wickedness. When the word of God becomes a part of our being, again, we enter into fellowship with him. But not only do we enter into fellowship with him, God has given us a crowd to be a part of as well. He's given us a brotherhood. He's given us a sisterhood as well. He's given to us fellow believers, a crowd that we can be in fellowship with, a fellowship with others who are of genuine faith. We all, again, we become brothers and we become sisters in Christ and we have each other. Now, I want this point to also be very clear to all of you today as well. All of those that choose God over everything, we have one another. Again, you are not alone in this world. We have each other who we can also lean on while we are on this journey. Mm -hmm. So we should lean on each other. Mm -hmm. You see, God, he calls for us to bear with one another. He calls for us to help uplift each other. Mm -hmm. So should we see our brother or should we see our sister in Christ? And it seems that they are down in the dumps. It seems like they are down in their spirit. We should be uplifting them, praying for them. Let us remember that the Lord put his word in the mouth of Jeremiah to not only tear down, but to build. That is to build up, to plant so that others could grow. And again, that word has been put in our mouth today as well. Yes, our genuine walk of faith and our fellowship with the Lord it will separate us from the world because as Jesus said, the world will always hate us. 
It will hate us because we have loved the Lord and it cannot understand why it will not understand his word. It speaks against them. Yet at the same time, our fellowship with each other, it should be a strong bond. We should love the man. We should love the woman that is living in his word, that is ministering and sharing his word as well. Again, I much rather have the love of my brother and sister in Christ than the love of one that is wicked and would rather tear me down rather than fortifying me. You see, I want someone around me who's going to help fortify me in this world that, that I live in today. I tell you again that it is in nobody's nature to want to be rejected. It is in nobody's nature to, to want to be hated as well. So because of this, some believers may try to soften the message of God. Yet I tell you today that the word of God, it, it should not be softened. Yes, the word of God should be shared with humility, but it should also be shared with great confidence. It should be shared with, with great boldness as well. We should not be ashamed because we have chosen God over everything. You see, the truth, it must be made known so that there is no doubt so that there is no hesitation to all of those around us that hear it and all of those that see it as well. As the writer of Hebrews said, the word of God, it is living and it is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit. You and I, we ought to be that two-edged sword today unashamed, not embarrassed, loving who we are, loving who it is we have chosen to give our faith to today. Are you ashamed today? I hope not. When you feel like you are all alone in the crowd, let us call on these words that the Lord said in his answer to Jeremiah. We'll see there in the 20th verse as I begin to close here that God answered and said to Jeremiah, I will make you to this people a fortified bronze wall. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I, God said, am with you to save you and to deliver you. And though he sat away from those who were mocking the Lord, again, Jeremiah, he was never alone. God was always with him I tell you today that God is always with us. We are never alone. Not only is God with us, but the Lord, he has also fortified us as well. We are fortified just as a bronze wall. Not only are we fortified as a bronze wall, but God has put other believers in our lives who can help fortify us as well. Again, I say to you today, that there is absolutely nothing wrong with living for your own in this world today. There is nothing wrong with making your own decision. You do not have to be persuaded by the word of the world. I, I encourage you again today, don't worry about trying to fit in with the crowd. You see, you are the one who is in control. Don't worry about how they will judge you. I would tell you today, worry about how God is going to look at you. Worry about how God is going to judge you. And again, I tell you today that there is absolutely nothing wrong with being a child of God. There's nothing wrong with being sanctified. There's nothing wrong with being set apart. There's nothing wrong with being different. In fact, when you choose God over everything, I tell you today that you are blessed and you are highly favored. That's what I want to be. I don't care what somebody of the world has to say about me because I know that I am blessed and highly favored because I have chosen God over everything. And I know that the same can be true for you if you simply choose God over everything. Again, you will be blessed and highly favored. Amen.
Amen. Amen.